we will discuss about peripheral blood smear we will discuss about how to prepare the smear and how to stain it so blood smear what is it it is uh, prepared by spreading a drop of blood across a glass slide followed by staining so here we can see a drop of blood is taken and it is smeared and spread along the slide and this is known as peripheral blood smear okay this is the unstained one and here we can see after staining this is the stained blood smear so now firstly going to what are the uses why should we do peripheral blood smear so peripheral blood smear helps to diagnose anemia so if the patient is suffering from anemia so if we have to classify the anemia into microcytic then you have macrocytic so this we can classify on peripheral blood smear secondly for thrombocytopenia cases or thrombocytosis cases then in leukemia cases to identify the leukemia and further type it then certain hemoparasitic infections such as malaria and filaria this we can diagnose and see on the peripheral blood smear then to see the effect of chemotherapy and radiotherapy on the bone marrow okay so this all along with this is a very routine investigation so before doing any investigation mostly we go for cbc along with pbs so that the journal like patient is suffering from anemia or patient has leukocytosis so that can be taken care of now going to how to prepare this blood smear this is the first part that is preparation of the blood smear here this we will prepare with the wedge method now this blood smear which we are talking about is a thin smear okay they are thin smear and thick smear we are talking just about thin smear over here now what we do is we take a drop of blood this is your slide now this slide dimensions are also important the slide is 75 mm into 25 mm and the thickness is 1 mm so this is the slide size we keep a drop of blood over here the drop of blood should not be very large and it should not be very small also and then we take another slide which is known as the spreader slide and this spreader slide is at the 30 degrees angle this touches the uh, drop of blood and the forward movement is used along the slide so as to smear this drop of blood along the slide then this slide should be rapidly dried this should be rapidly uh, dried with the help of electric fan like that okay so this is the preparation of the blood smear this is the preparation of unstained smear then second part will be the staining part now firstly how we should know that the, this smear is very well spread it should have a tongue shape so the smear if you see this is it should have a tongue shape okay it should not cover the entire smear so this you can see it should not cover the entire uh, slide only it should ha uh, have thick and thin areas with gradual transition if you see a very normal uh, well spread smear you will see uh, if you start from the here the here with the drop of blood was prepared here the blood film will be slightly thick and as it goes it goes to thin okay so first part of the smear is known as the head part then you have your body part of the smear and then last is the tail part okay so uh, this should be in a well spread smear so there should be thick and thin areas with gradual transition not abrupt transition here you can see it is abrupt transition thick area is there again thick area is there then thin area is there so this is not a well spread smear then there should be no holes or lines while spreading the smear The, uh, for uh, avoiding this the spreader should be very smooth so the spreader should also have its qualities the spreader should be should have smooth edges should not be having jagged edges now going to the staining part now the staining part in routine laboratories we use lishman staining so lishman staining is used now lishman staining along with many other stain is a type of romanovsky stains so romanovsky stain what is it it is stain which has two components there is a acidic component within this stain there is a basic component to stain the acidic parts of the cell and to stain the basic part of the cell this will give a different color to every uh, cell okay so in the basic part 
if we talk about Romanesque stains. The basic part is mostly methylene blue and the acidic part is eosin Y. So eosin Y and methylene blue, these are majority present in all Romanesque stains. What are other Romanesque stain apart from Lishman staining which we will discussing? You have your MGG stain, your right stain, Jenner stain, field stain. These are all stains which are also Romanesque stains only. Now going to the components of a, uh, a component of a Romanesque stain. Okay, you have methylene blue. As in Lishman also, we will have methylene blue. We will have eosin. Now, methylene blue is a basic component of the dye. That means the basic component will attract the opposite thing. That it means it will have affinity for the acidic component of the cell. What are the acidic component? They are nucleic acid. You have basophilic granules. These are the acidic component. Now, this you can remember it that. Uh, it is methylene blue so means it will impart a blue color to this it will impart a purple violet color to the nucleic acid the basophilic granule that means the cells nucleus if you see in any slide the nucleus of the cell will be slightly purple violet in color so this is due to methylene blue Second component is the eosin component that is the acidic component. This will have affinity for the basic components. Now the basic components of the cell are hemoglobin, the eosinophilic granules and the color it imparts is pink to red color. So if you see the cytoplasm because like if you take example of RBC in the cytoplasm it has hemoglobin that means the color of the RBCs will be slightly reddish pink. So this is how this dye works. Now well stained smear, if you see a well stained slide, if uh, this is your slide, this is the tongue shape. Okay, so it will be slightly more purple over the thick part and will be pink in the thinner part. So this is a well stained slide. Now going to the, now uh, I told you about the well stained slide. That means it has slightly uh, purple tones then towards the thin end it will have a slightly pinkish tone if it the slide if you see one slide which is having excess blue color now what is the reason behind it the slide is excessively blue if you're making it so reasons can be the slide is very thick therefore secondly too long staining time we will talk about how to stain the slide so if the staining time is too long it can have excess blue color inadequate washing of the slide then excessive alkaline pH of the stain or water will also give rise to blue color now all the opposite of that will give rise to excessive red color to the slide like thin smear too short staining time excessive washing or excessive P uh, acidic pH so you should remember one thing and then you can see the opposite gives the pink color now going to the Lishman stain which we will be which we will use in all the laboratories so lishman staining is again it has mainly three components you have methylene blue you have eosin and this is dissolved in a methyl alcohol now you know the function of uh, methylene blue okay you know the function of eosin we already discussed it now methyl alcohol is a fixative that means the slides which we are uh, which we are air drying okay the smear which was air dried it acts as a fixative so that the slide and the smear can be bound together so it acts as a fixative now lishman stain you in the market you get in two forms you can get it as ready-made formation okay it is ready to use and second is the lishman powder which you get lishman powder should be mixed with methyl alcohol okay these two are mixed together and then the stain is kept for around three to five days in a brown container so that it can mature and then it is ready to use this is the two ways in the market the lishman stain is available now the method how to do the lishman staining is very simple because it's very simple it is very readily done okay so firstly you have to make prepare the air dried smear that we know how to prepare it okay then secondly you have to cover the smear with the lishman stain for around two minutes you will cover it and then the smear entirely should be covered okay then twice the volume we will add buffered water and this should be kept for seven minutes 
this uh, when step is done you will see uh, above the slide there will be a metallic sheen which is uh, seen okay this uh, is present there then when seven minutes are over what will you do is you will wash the slide with the stream of buffered water now tap water can also be used but uh, ideally tap water does not has uh, correct ph okay if the tap water has uh, correct ph then tap water can also be used then slide then last is the drying step then you will dry the slide you will wipe the back portion with the tissue paper you will wipe the back portion of the slide dry and last is the examination of the smear so examination of the smear is done under low power that is your 10x then it is done under high power that is the 40x of the microscope and last is the oil immersion lens okay that is the 100x okay we will talk about the examination of the smear in the next part of the video okay the part second we will discuss about the examination of the smear so this was all about the peripheral blood smear we uh, how to prepare it how the staining is done and examination we will discuss in the next video now uh, thanks for watching this video thank you